Oh, man, you made bank on that Kickstarter. Guess you don't have to do any more work. <laughs> Not true at all. So in today's video, we're going to be following up with Rob on what happened after his super successful Kickstarter campaign, which is, you know, fulfilling the campaign. All right, stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love sharing my insights about all things self-publishing with you. Before I get into the details of today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe. That way you can be here each week as I release new videos on self-publishing, making a career out of being an author, and now being a mompreneur. And in today's video, we're finalizing our talk with Rob about his Kickstarter campaign for the book M is for Money. So Previously in this video series, we saw how he found the illustrator, how he worked with the illustrator. Um, in the last video, we went over all the strategy that went into planning and executing the successful Kickstarter campaign, right? So he had to have the, all these tiers planned out. He had to know um, what he was going to offer. He had to have influencers lined up. He had to have all those things. And so we know from the end of the last video that he had over $13,000 in pledges and he had far exceeded his initial goal of the $6,000. Um, so now it's like, okay, well, he has to fulfill it. Where'd all this money go? And that's actually the first thing we're going to talk about right now. Hey guys, so before we actually jump into the interview here, um, and if you're watching this whole series, you may even get sick of hearing me give this little disclaimer to you, but I have a link down below in the description to get a checklist from me. It's gonna go over all the details we're covering in the videos in this entire series, from figuring out the illustrator and who you're gonna work with, um, vetting them, interviewing them, um, determining if you wanna do a Kickstarter campaign, all the details that go into it. Um, so I really suggest if this is something that you're considering that you um, click the link below and claim this checklist. Um, I leave space where you can take notes for things. Um, and just a lot of things that Rob and I learned along the way are in here. Now, obviously your campaign is going to be unique and special to you. Um, so, uh, you know, take additional notes elsewhere. Um, but this should really help you get started with planning. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys use this. So definitely make sure to claim this checklist um, below uh, before you even watch the video so you can take notes along with. Um, but definitely by the end of watching all these videos, if you are deciding, hey, I really want to do a Kickstarter. This is the checklist that's going to help you. Okay. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. All right, everyone. So as we heard in our last video from Rob, he had this very successful Kickstarter campaign. He had a huge payday. M is for money, ABC books, all M is for money and ABC book all about money. Um, and clearly Rob made a bunch of it. So He's just raking it. He doesn't even need to sell the book. No, I'm not joking. Um, so uh, he made over $13,000 on the Kickstarter. But let's talk about some of the nitty gritty of where this money went, how much you still have, if any, and go from there. How much it's a painful conversation. Um, so yeah, that will come in a moment. But mm -hmm. so when we talked about cost projections, I actually did a pretty good job in terms of cost projections. I overestimated on my cost. So I was doing great in all sense of the word, um, the money I had was going to be more than enough to pay for the books to be printed, for the shipping to go out, for the extra rewards. That, so we had stickers, bookmarks, um, fridge magnets, temporary tattoos, um, and thank you cards and envelopes for those as well. We had bubble mailers that the books had to go inside of, and then we had shipping labels. So it was able to cover all of those things. Kickstarter themselves are going to take a 10% cut of the money you raise. So I, I made 13749 I got a payout of 12,600. So they took, you know, the 1300 or whatever it was out of it. And from that, that comes two weeks after your campaign closes. So campaign closes, everyone's credit card gets charged on the last day of the campaign when it closes. And then in the two weeks in between, that's what it takes for Kickstarter to actually process it and get it sent out to you. Um, you will actually have to look out for some of your backers who did not have accurate credit card information. So that did happen. I had one backer who did not have the right credit card information in, so the, pro the payment didn't go through and um, they didn't respond to emails. So I had one actually drop out from that number, but the rest who didn't have accurate information actually fixed it. So they were able to go in and fix their information, which was great. So pretty decent success rate there. And I let people know ahead of time, like, Hey, just a reminder, like campaign's been funded. So your cards are going to be charged very soon. Um, just so it wasn't a surprise to anybody because that can happen sometimes where I think I maybe had four or five people like actually take their pledge away throughout the campaign. So they pledged for 30 bucks to buy a book. And then during the campaign, they actually took their pledge back. Um, and no, you'll never find out a reason for it. Like, I know it can be kind of hurtful and you're like, well, why did they do it? Do they not like it anymore? Do they not like me? But um, you can't 
harp on it because there's no way to find out why unless you actually know who the person is because usually all you get is like a screen name like a username until you get the end of the campaign you start getting the actual details of the people so sometimes i feel like if people are not maybe expecting that like maybe they don't manage their finance as well whatever the reason like they might actually have to pull that money back out you never know the reason so i'm always going to assume it's a good reason but yes um, so some people will drop their pledges. So expect that, um, every Kickstarter campaign I've heard of has had that happen to them that at least one person has actually taken their pledge back. And then some people don't fulfill the pledge at the other end because they've either changed their credit card, they cancel their credit card. Um, a couple of people, their credit cards, um, got compromised and they had to, um, just, they got new ones and they, had, they didn't put in the new information for it. Um, so there's a variety of reasons why that might happen. Just follow up with people if you can see. Um, you're going to send out a survey at the end of the Kickstarter campaign where you ask people for their shipping information, if you have any other details you need. So in my case, I needed to know, did they want their books signed in some cases? Um, and also how many of the books they wanted to receive if they had signed up for one of the higher tiers. So say you signed up for the Give 10 tier, that meant I was going to send you five books and I was going to keep five books to donate. But I offered them the option of, do you want me to just keep more of them or do you want all five? And a lot of people were like, I just want one. You take care of the rest. I just want to donate 10 bucks. So that was a great question to ask because it saves me on shipping. So I can hand deliver those books potentially, or I can send them out in bulk to a school. So just something to think about if you do something like that. But yeah, so $12,600 hits your account. You feel like you're loaded for like 10 seconds. And usually what happens is in my case, I was trying to be efficient. I knew the project was funded like 10 days into it. So I knew that I was going to have to do these Kickstarter rewards. So I started ordering them and paying for them ahead of time because I was in the fortunate position. I take care of my personal finances that I had the cash available to go and pay for these things up front, knowing that I could reimburse myself later and shout out for credit card rewards points now, because that's so great <laughs> when you're putting like multiple thousand dollar charges on your card, you can get the points for it. Um, so money came in and very quickly it started getting spent. Um, so the offset run of your books is the first thing you need to do because that can be a couple of weeks to a couple of months process, depending on your printer. And I know you're going to have a conversation with, um, the printer I went with Kristen from Formax. Um, and they were actually one of the shortest turnaround times, which was a big perk. Um, if your book is coming from overseas, like China is a big source of offset run printed books. It could be sitting in a shipping container in like the ports for months before it actually manages to make it out and onto trucks. So you want to be you know, cognizant of the time you live in, what supply chain looks like at the time. Um, I kind of want to support a local business if I could. And Formax had a printing location, shipping location in Maryland, which I was kind of excited about. I was like, oh, very cool. So actually they would send me a notification that the books had shipped. And like two hours later, they arrived at the door because they were coming from Maryland, which was awesome. So in terms of costs, I wrote down a couple of numbers. The print run for my first offset run was a thousand books. They were hardcover and MK, you have the front of the book there. I added an extra customization to the front and that was this UV um, treatment on the five characters. You can't really quite see it there, but the title and the five characters kind of stick out a little bit. They have an extra treatment on them, which is just a little bit extra to add to it, but I wanted like almost a special edition for the Kickstarter books. It won't be on the um, print on demand books, but it's a special Kickstarter edition, which is even more special if you got the first run Again, spoiler alert for what's coming in a second. <laughs> so the rewards themselves totaled up to 3,273. So that was the, the magnets, the stickers, the temporary tattoos, um, the shipping uh, bubble mailer things. And also I had like individual cards. So what I did with shipping was the books themselves can go in media mail, which is a very cheap way of sending um, a physical book. But the catch is you can't put anything else in there. So you're not supposed to put bookmarks in there. You're not supposed to put stickers or any of that stuff. My local post office was kind of like, I mean, just don't tell us it's in there and we're not going to check. But I don't know if that's a standard across the board. So rather than take that risk, I was like, we're going to separate it. It was cheaper still to do two separate postings. One was a greeting card that had all the small individual rewards in it. And the second was the media mail. Mm -hmm. And by sending those separately, I was able to make sure everyone got the rewards they got two pieces of mail instead of one, which is kind of nice too. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a nice little perk. And it was cheaper than putting it all in the same package and sending it, which is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, surprisingly enough, of all the videos that I do on this channel, my media mail 
videos are the most popular ones, which I, I watched it before doing the media. Yeah, mail, so. I was funny. Like you were texting me about it and he was like, I literally just Googled media mail and you came up first. And I was like, Oh, sorry. I was like, I don't know why you look that up. And you were like, it's literally just you. Um, so yeah, so it is a requirement. You can't have anything extra in there, but I liked the solution that you had of just like the standard a four envelope. Here's your bookmark. Here's your sticker. You know, here's this note because it was another touch point. And I think we'll get into this a bit later, but yes, the fulfillment, it's not just like, okay, thanks for your money crickets. Okay. Here's your stuff. Like these are your super fans. And I think by your continued communication with them, with those multiple touch points, you drove the excitement. Um, you kept that, that connection with them. And I think that's going to help obviously as the book goes into pre-order and launch, uh, or retail launch, I should say. So I like that solution. Yeah, it's um, and that was again something I got from the um, Kickstarter launch formula book that I read. That um, keeping communication up with your backers is super important. Um, you want them to know where the book is at because it's not like Amazon, which we're all very used to, where you pay and the book arrives a day later. Um, this is a much longer process. They're basically trusting you because you kind of hinted this. Like I basically could have taken the money and run. Um, you know, Kickstarter will maybe try to chase you down for, it. I don't think they have the power to like pull the money back. Um, so the worst thing that happens is you kind of get labeled as a scam artist and you kind of make a bad rep for everyone else on Kickstarter. So I don't know what repercussions there would be for that, but yeah, at the end of the day, you've, but you've got this pot of money and now you need to fulfill the promises that you made. Um, so now, now it comes down to fulfillment time. And I knew that like I had a six week turnaround for the books to get printed and back. And then I promised them in October. So I gave myself a longer window than I thought I would need just again, to make sure that I was always overperforming instead of being behind. Mm -hmm. So I do recommend doing that. Like even whatever you think it's going to be, add more time, more costs, like just, just plan for things, not going exactly to plan. Mm -hmm. And that's just a great advice. Anytime you're working on a book, anytime Kickstarter, no Kickstarter, build some cushion in. I mean, our illustrator was supposed to be done with the book in June and wasn't finished until like the second week of August. So plan plan for that stuff for sure. Um, and that probably came down a little bit to the demands. Like I went back and forth a lot. Like I was thinking about every detail in the book. I wanted it to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that you know, I went back and forth on until we got what we wanted. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's, that's something you need to plan for. Cause like, you don't have forever to do this. People will start getting worried. Like, mm -hmm. where's my book? Where, my like I've yeah. gave you my money. Where's my reward. Mm -hmm. So by doing just updates on your Kickstarter page, you just let people know like, Hey, I just sent off the um, book to be printed. I just got my first draft of it back. Um, the books are here. Like, I'm so excited to package them up for you and get them out, expect them in the next month. So you're not saying like, Oh, they're going to be going out tomorrow. Like, just, so you know, I'm gonna have to pack each and every one of these individually. Mm -hmm. Like this is going to be a process. Yeah. Um, so just letting people know where their, where their book is and um, keeping them updated. Yeah. And then. And I'll say you, yes. well, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on one point before we get to the extra special limited edition. <laughs> um, and so one thing we did during this process, while, you know, you were planning for Kickstarter and looking at some of the expenses, we did look at a fulfillment house where we could have sent all the books, all the extras, everything to a fulfillment house. Now, each tier would have been a different SKU, SKU with them. We would have had to pay by the SKU. We would have had to pay for all the shipping so and additional fees. So it was going to be more expensive, obviously, to go with that fulfillment house, but it would have been a lot easier for you and your family yes. um, versus what you ended up doing. So I will give kudos to Rob um, that for all, all the different book packages he had to get out, he or a member of his family lovingly put them in the package put the label on, went down to the post office um, and took care of that. So um, that is something to keep in mind too, is that you could have a very successful campaign and then you have to deal with the challenges of a very successful campaign. And that's a great problem to have. Um, but that is the exact problem that you had, Rob, with all your fulfillment that you had to do. So yeah. Um, and that was, that was the, the question, like, was it going to be too much work that I needed help from fulfillment house? And thankfully my mother-in-law was super helpful. Um, so she, has basically dedicated an entire room of her house to being a fulfillment center for <laughs> this book. Um, it's full of boxes. It's got a table that's like got shipping envelopes and stuff like that. So she was like allowing me to use this space that she didn't need, thank goodness, because it would not have fit very well in our townhouse, I will say. Um, and it gave me the, the time to like take my time, make sure I did it right as well. So I wasn't trying to rush because like it was clogging up our entire house. And um, she was awesome about like, if I printed the label and gave like, this is what needs to go into the envelope, she was able to then stuff the envelope. So particularly for the books, I did the, 
individual Kickstarter rewards that were going in the cards because I could do that in my basement. That was a smaller one. Those got sent out first and then the books got sent out a couple of weeks later. So yeah, if you have family members who are willing to help you out, I suggest taking the help. Um, if it's a trust issue, like you want to be in full control of it, I totally understand it because it's hard because you, you're basically trusting them to put the right thing in the right spot and go to the right person. But um, you know, in my case, I was able to trust my mother-in-law to do that, which was wonderful. All right. So yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the special extra limited edition. (laughs) So yeah, uh, I have one of the special editions here. So this one is a very special edition. This is the original Kickstarter book that came out. And right after we had finished sending it to all the backers. So this is 280, 300 books, something like that had been sent out to the backers. Um, I dropped a copy off to my local library and I was like, Hey, I have this book. I've got a bunch of books that have been donated. So I have this like stack of 300 books that are pledged or earmarked for donation. I need to find homes for those. And I started my local library. I was like, are you interested in putting these on the shelves? And how, if so, how many would you like? And I got a really nice email back. It's like, Oh, love this. It's great. It's going to help kids so much, but I can't put a book on the shelf that has a typo um, spelling error in it. And I like stopped. I like froze. Like, there's no way there's no way it's a children's book. It has like 300 words in it. Like, how is there a spelling error in this book? And MK was on the receiving end of a lot of my freak out texts. (laughs) And and, like, you sent me the the screenshot of it. And I will tell you, I read it 10 times and I was like, is this a joke? I can't find the typo. (laughs) And the typo has been fixed on this book, but Mm -hmm. if we turn it a certain way, you might Mm -hmm. be able to see it. Do you guys see it? that little off color blue down there. Mm -hmm. So there's a sticker currently over this. The word um, is pay, but it was printed P-A-X. And I think I blame it on the fact that X and Y look close enough to each other that I think the human mind just reads over it the way it's supposed to be. And the word pay appears in the sentence above it as well. So I think we're just primed to see that as pay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I proofread it. I don't know how many times my wife looked at it. You looked at it. A couple of other friends looked at it like, This book had been proofread. This was not like a slap together thing that was like, okay. But so yeah, the first print run of a thousand books had a spelling error in it, which for an adult book, maybe you get away with for For a children's book. You don't like, that's a big deal, especially if it's like for three to eight year olds. And this is about them learning to read and it's about um, literacy development. Like that's a big no, no. So I could see why the library said no. Um, So I think that was a moment where, it was all about the reaction to the situation. Could you pretend that it didn't happen and just kind of cross your fingers that nobody messaged you about it? Yes. Um, but I think it was important, especially on your advice as well, like that we came out to the Kickstarter backers and said, look, big embarrassing moment here. There's a typo in a children's book. Not sure how that happened, but it did. And we offered to um, replace the book for free for anyone who wanted a replacement. Some people were like, we're, we're just cool at supporting the project. We didn't even notice it. So we're not going to ask for another one. And then a lot of people are like, yeah, I, I would love a replacement and either we're going to gift it to someone else. I got actually a lot of great feedback too about the book from those messages. So some people like love the book. My kid loves it. Would love a, a replacement copy. So I do actually get some testimonials out of it too, that are you know very nice to have. So that was a very expensive mistake. So I was doing very well in the black. I think I was $2,000 in the black. Um, So that was just going to be straight profit. I was planning to donate 10% of that to nonprofits that support financial literacy, but I instead had to um, plow that back into doing another offset run of 500 books that had been fixed so that I could replace the books for Kickstarter backers. And then also I didn't feel comfortable um, sending any books to schools or libraries that had the typo in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though I'm able to fix the books with a sticker, I'm going to just donate those books to like Maryland book bank or for first book down in DC, or there's a company up in New York that just wants to buy books at a super cheap price and they're okay mm-hmm. with a sticker cover on it. Mm-hmm. So they're just going to pay me to ship them up there. Yes. So I'm going to give them away and to get them into hands of people who could actually use them and need them. Mm-hmm. And then going to replace those other books and then send out the donated ones. So I am slightly in the red at the moment, mm-hmm. but um, I am seeing larger sales come in now for school. So I've done a couple of bulk sales since then. So it's edging closer to being in the black. And we are, of course, in pre-order at the moment. And I have no idea how many books have been pre-ordered, but I'm super excited to find out. Yes. Yes. So um, as of the time we're recording this, the book is for pre-sale on Amazon um, through KDP for the ebook and then through Ingram Spark 
pretty much everywhere um, and print hardcover and ebook as well. So I think this will air after it goes out. So just regular order it at this point. Um, but it's, it was a very exciting process. Obviously um, I think it's very clear. You'd way more work on this than I did um, just because you had all the fulfillment and all the Kickstarter and everything back and forth. But this was such a great campaign. And I think the the mistakes that were made, obviously, like there was a typo, there were these little things. Like I think these were great learning moments. And I think they show people that when you're hearing from somebody about, oh, I had this great successful Kickstarter, it's like, okay, well, there's a lot that went into that. It wasn't by accident. And then there is that responsibility on the end side of the fulfillment um, and things like that. So this was this was a fun campaign to work on super successful. Um, and I actually, my copy is the Ingram Spark retail copy um, and it looks great. So I know that was a consideration. And we talked a, a bit about that when I did the video with Kristen on, on printing that, you know, there are different options, but it still looks great for retail and it has the correct spelling in there. So yes. if you don't have an extra special limited edition, tough luck. Yeah. 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 Those of you who have the first thousand copies, that is a collector's edition, never to be seen again. Yes. Um, so. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time in this video and the other previous videos in the series to go over this. Um, I really appreciate it. If anybody would like to get Emma's for Money, go to emmasformoneybook.com and check it out at any retailer where you get your books, um, Barnes & Noble, Target, Amazon, Walmart, all the places. It's there. Um, great. Yeah. And look back on my journey of bringing the book out on Instagram or Facebook. You, know, you can find those at, at Emmons for Money book. Um, either platform has that tag on it. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you, MK. All right. So as you can see, there was a lot of work that had to go into this. And one of the big elements, I know I mentioned in the last video, but that you have to pack your patience when you're doing this. Rob very meticulously planned out every element of this campaign. None of this was a coincidence. None of this was a happy surprise accident. Like it was years that he spent obviously developing these connections with different influencers that went into it, but also like the meticulous planning that went into the Kickstarter, um, the estimating he did for costs ahead of time, um, being able to leverage his network um, to be able to help with the fulfillment. There was a lot that went into it. And one thing that I, I hear authors kind of like mention offhand is like, oh, I just want to make money from my books. So I'll do a Kickstarter thinking that that's going to be this magical catch all that like, oh, well, I just want to make money off my book. Well, first of all, pick a different hobby, pick a, pick a different career. Like if you're just in this to make money, there's very few niches where you can do that. And obviously people are out there making videos telling people how to do that. So they kind of get crowded really fast. Um, the point of the Kickstarter is to really drive attention and marketing for your book. Like Rob said, it was more a validation of the idea um, to say, hey, this is something that people want out there um, to offset the cost, like his own upfront costs. Um, like he wanted to be made whole. And obviously, like he said, he was still a little in the red after having to do the reprint. So you should really focus on prioritize your Kickstarter campaign as a marketing effort that should pay for itself it is not the cure all for you as an author to suddenly be profitable um, and making money. Now, obviously, all the work he's done leading up to this, all the promotion um, that's now showing up in the pre-orders that he's getting for the book. And you can order MS for Money anywhere um, if you have a child in your life um, that you think would be good to learn about money so they don't make the mistakes that we all make as adults. Then this is a great book. Um, I definitely believe in it. And that's why I wanted to showcase Rob and his book, but also the process he went through, because I know you guys can learn a lot from it. Okay, so this entire video series, there's lots of information. All your questions, please leave them below so that way I can do any follow up videos that you need. If you found this video or this series of videos helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. That lets YouTube know that you got value from this information and can get it in front of other authors like us. Now you can get back to writing your book. Hey, if you want to continue to support this channel and my other creative work, please head over to buymeacoffee.com and support my channel. You can buy me one coffee, three, five, ten, or you can even get a membership. Those who are in the membership are actually going to be included in the acknowledgments pages of all of my published books moving forward as a big thank you. And you can even get some additional options to get an Instagram thank you post shout out or a shout out in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for supporting this channel.